Good afternoon, my name is Wei Wang, and I'm from Intel. In this presentation, I'm going to introduce using hardware accelerators to accelerate uh, non migration of virtual machines. Those guys here are also from Intel, and they are contributors to this project. Mm, let's have a look at the agenda of this presentation. So in total, I have five parts. In the first part, I'm going to introduce the goals of this project. And in the second part, I will give a high level, give an introduction of the high level architecture of this solution. And in the third part, I will introduce some important features that are used in this solution. And in the fourth part, I will show some test results. And in the last part, I will introduce some future works that we plan to do. Okay, let's start from the project goals. So um, today there are some pain points in now migration. So the first one is that uh, virtual machines with memory intensive, bright intensive workloads are difficult to migrate. So this is because the guest uh, writes to the memory, they dirty more pages than the pages that can be transferred during migration. So the second one is VMs with large memory size usually takes long time to migrate. The third one is uh, the VM migration may consume large network bandwidth. So there are some existing solutions in the current uh, queue. Uh, for example, people may choose to use the CPUs to do compression, like a multi-threaded compression with ZDeep. And the problem is that it's slow based on our experiments. And the second issue is uh, it consumes too many CPUs from the host. So this is not expected from the cloud, cloud vendors. So our solution is to offload the compression part to enter QAT quick assistance technology with efficient approaches. So by efficient, I mean higher migration throughput so this is measured by how many pages we can transfer the phone source to destination during migration. So the higher, the better. And the second one is lower CPU utilization. So we don't want to waste more CPUs from the host. So the second goal we have here is to have a common design ready for future more accelerators to join. So on the upcoming Intel server rapid CPUs, we will have data streaming accelerator, short for DSC, and uh, Intel analytics accelerator, short for IAX. So we have these two more accelerators to be integrated into the CPU chip. And we want to take advantage of them to process the guest memory during migration as well. And also we wanted to have a smarter selection technique, which smartly and dynamically select an appropriate accelerator to accelerate now migration. So I will introduce this a little bit more in later slides. So let's have a look at the architecture of this solution. So on the source machine, so on the bottom here, you can see that uh, we could have multiple accelerators here, and uh, they, each of them have their own software stack, like uh, the QT library and uh, the driver. And uh, on the on the top, there are two threads here. So the migration migration thread is the one that's already in existing queue. So in the migration thread, uh, there, I conclude uh, it into four steps. The first step is the migration setup. So basically it will do some preparation for migration, including the accelerator device initialization and the device and the device pulling throughout the cre creation. So in the second step, the migration step, uh, the migration thread will do the page searching. So it searches for 30 pages to process and send it to the destination. So in the third, in the, in the third step, uh, we will do a smart, uh, a smart selection. So the migration thread will select an appropriate uh, accelerator based on the history of the acceleration efficiency. So once it decides that, uh, for example, using QAT is more efficient, so it will choose QAT to process memory for the following pages. And the, the fourth step is to dispatch requests. So once the, an accelerator is selected, it will compose a request 
data structure and uh, submit it to the device to do processing. For example, if it's using QET, uh, there may have multiple QET compression engines. So it may deliver, dispatch the requests to the, those compression engines in one roving fashion. And for the device pulling thread, its main job is to pull for responses from the device. So the response here means that uh, the previously submitted request has been processed. And once the response is, uh, is got, is obtained by the pulling thread, it will release the, the request data structure. And it uh, blocks when there is no response ready. So the second thing the polling thread doing here is to send the compressed data along with the related header to the destination through the network. So in this model, we basically have a split of the migration flow. So in the current migration flow, the migration thread is responsible for searching for 30 pages and then send it to the, to the network. So in this model, we, the, the data transfer is uh, is uh, off, uh, is given to the polling thread to send. So here is the picture on the destination side. It's uh, similar to the one that we saw on the source side. So on the bottom here, it also have those uh, accelerators, and uh, on the top it has the two threads as before, and. The migration setup is similar as the source side, so it will do some initialization work. So the difference here is it has a page receiving step. So this step is it receives the data from the network, and then it, the migration thread passes the the migration protocol. For example, we added a multi-page protocol, so there is a multi-age header, and also it will select an accelerator. To, to process the memory. So the, the, the data, the, the header, like the header tears the migration thread on the destination side that which accelerator to use. For example, if the source side use the QET to do compression, then on the destination side, it will select the QET to do decompression. So for the device polling thread, um, on the destination side, it, its job is simple. So it adjusts, it adjusts the pulse for responses. So once a, a response is obtained, then it will release the, the request data structure. And it also blocks when there is no response ready. And the, uh, the um, for the device, the decompressed the data are DMA to the QEMU memory directly. Okay, let's go to the, the, the third part. Um, so I will introduce some features that uh, I used in this solution. So the first feature we use is zero copy. So it allows, with this feature, it allows the accelerator device to directly uh, access to the guest memory. So the second one we use is the multi-page processing. Um, so the current migration flow only supports uh, single-page processing, meaning that it uh, finds the only one uh, dirty page and then compress this page and then send it to the migration, uh, to, to the network. So with this feature, the migration flow is able to process multiple pages each time. And the third feature is the uh, acceleration request of caching. So this feature just uh, caches the acceleration request the data structure uh, for efficient memory allocation. So I will introduce more details about uh, this, those three features. So for zero copy, so at the migration setup step, uh, the migration thread needs to pre-allocate and pin uh, the QEMU memory needs to be pre-allocated and uh, pinned. So this is uh, to prevent uh, the memory to be swapped out during migration. And, uh, so on the destination side, uh, the memory will be unpinned when the migration is done. Uh, 
but, uh, this, but this is not needed uh, in the future when we have VFIO based uh, based uh, based driver. So I will I will introduce in our future work. So for the request uh, composing, uh, on the source side, the DMA we will set up a DMA buffer for the for the source device to to process the memory. So the, the DMA read buffer, uh, it points to the QME memory. So like uh, the, D, the QAT device can direct me to DMA read from the QME memory and then compress, compress the guest data. And for the DMA write buffer, it's allocated by the library, for example, the QAT library. So when the, the, compressed, when the compression is ready, it is done, the data are DMA, the, are DMA write to the to the to the to the buffer, and uh, on the destination side, the DMA read buffer is allocated by the by the library. So there is a piece of buffer, uh, and the DMA write buffer points to the QME memory. So the device read uh, reads the compress the data from this library buffer and then do decompression. So once decompression is done, the device do DMA write to the QME memory directly. So this achieves the zero copy. So for the multi-page processing, so here is an example that we have 12 pages. So the migration thread will find the multiple dirty pages one time. For example, here it finds that the page zero one is dirty and it, uh, it composed a data structure that uh, the dirty page starts from zero and the size two, meaning that uh, there are two pages, consecutive pages. And the second group of dirty pages starts from page three and it has the four pages. And the third group starts from page eight and page nine and it has the three dirty pages. And then the migration thread do the request composition, composition and it uh, composes the request uh, which is submittable to the device. And it also needs to set up the DMA, the DMA, DMA buffer. So it's a scale together buffer. So like here, it has nine buffers. So the DMA, the DMA buffer points to these nine pages and it's chained together. And the, the orange box here is the buffer allocated by the, by the QT library. So the QT device fetches data from the QME memory and then do, do compression. So once the compression is done, the, the data, those nine pages, um, and the compression of these nine pages, uh, the result is written into the orange box, which is allocated by the QT library. And then the device pulling thread will transport those compressed data as a whole to the destination side. And for the data, it, uh, each one is associated with the multi-page header, which tells the address of the the address of the QME page. Like on the destination side, when the data is received here, uh, so it it knows that uh, there is multi-page header and uh, and the payload is uh, compressed the data, and then it uh, the the migration thread on the destination side will compose the request, and it finds. Uh, for the DMA buffer, the destination side address is is uh, calculated by the multi-page header, which tells where is the QME page that should hold those decompressed data. So the device reads data from the compressed data and do de decompression, and then writes those data to the to the to the des destination side the QME memory. So for explanation request caching, uh, this is a common technique. So during the device setup stage, um, the migration thread uh, pre-allocates some amount of explanation requests in data structure and uh, fills them into the cache pool. And during the request composing stage, the, the migration thread will allocate uh, the request. Mm, so instead of doing the malloc it uh, directly take a request from the cache pool once the requests are, are used up from the cache pool it will do malloc so 
and then it initializes the request based on the new pages to send. So for the response pulling thread, well, when a response is obtained, uh, the thread frees the request to the cache pool. So instead of doing the calling the free syscall. Okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, the test results. So for the tests, we tested on the Intel Xeon CPU E5 2699 before running at 2.2 GHz, and this is the Broadwell CPU. And for QET, we use the PCIe Gen 3 QET card. So it's a PCIe card plugged into the PCIe slot. But in on server CPUs, we will have QT integrated into CPU and it uses PCIe Gen 4. So the, the speed will be much faster on the upcoming Intel server CPU. So for the DRAM, um, we use the DDR4 and uh, running at uh, 2,666 uh, megahertz. And for the network card, we use the uh, 40 gig network card. So for the migration setup, the downtime we use is 300 microsecond. So it's the default uh, downtime using QNU. Uh, for the network bandwidth, we didn't set at a limit, so it can use up to 40 gigahertz, but in reality, it won't uh, consume those much bandwidth. For the compress level, we set it to one, so this is the fastest speed to compress. Uh, for the multi-page, we added a new parameter called multi-page, so meaning that uh, the migration thread can can, um, can process multiple pages each time. So we set the value to 63. This is the maximum value can be supported uh, currently. So for the guest, we have three types of guest to test. The first type in, of guest has the four vCPUs and 32 gig RAM and it runs a workload with the writing compression friendly data. And the second type of guest has four vCPUs and it has a 32 gig of RAM, but it runs a workload which writes sequence numbers to memory. So sequence number is not a very compression friendly, but it's still, still okay to compress, not difficult also. So the for the third type of guests, it has the eight of uh, eight of VCPUs and uh, 128 gig RAM, and uh, it runs a memory cache e workload with the right, uh, reading and writing random numbers. So random numbers are relatively difficult to compress. We will see the compression ratio later. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the first uh, test. So we run this virtual workload inside of the guest, which writes uh, data to the to the guest memory in a specified dirty read. Uh, like here, we can set it to write uh, 1,000 megabytes per second. And uh, for the data, so um, there is something probably you need to understand first. So for the throughput, it's the migration throughput, and it's measured by how many pages we are transferred from the source to destination. So the higher, the better. And to make the numbers simple, so I put the multiplier here. So for the long compression case, it can send uh, like uh, um, 17 multiply 10,000 pages per second to 29, um, multiply this number. So for the 16 CPU case, so it's a little bit, uh, it's uh, almost um, two times larger, more than two times larger for the QAT. So it's uh, around the five times larger. So we can see the normalized throughput here. So the QT case has much larger migration throughput than the long compression case. So for the largest migratable data rate, it means that we run, we turn this number, this data rate inside of the guest, and uh, we get that uh, if we Turn the number to like 1,000 and 200, then this VM cannot be migrated with, uh, with without compression. So this one, um, 1,000 and 100 dirty read inside of the guest is the largest dirty read that the guest can have to ensure it can be migrated. So for the 16 CPU case, it supports this number, and for the QT case, it's much larger than the low compression case. 
And for the extra CPU utilization, it means how many CPUs are used in addition to the migration thread. So for the long compression case, uh, there is no extra thread, so it uh, doesn't uh, consume extra CPU. So for the 16 CPU case, it consumes 678 CPU, percentage CPU. It doesn't uh, consume all the 16 CPUs because this uh, data pattern is easy to compress. So for the QED case, it's less than 40 percentage. So it's uh, much less than the CPU compression case. So for the compression ratio, you can see that uh, the QED compression has a higher ratio than the, the Z CPU ZDB compression. So the compression algorithm we use here is same, is same, is the same. But uh, the compression ratio is different. This is because the multi-page compression. So when we have uh, multiple pages, because uh, for this workload, it writes uh, all once to, to, to the memory. So this repeated one, can be uh, can generate uh, only, for example, one or single one as the compression payload. So in this case, multiple page can have the higher compression ratio. If we don't have this repeated numbers, the compression ratio between the QED and the CPU compression will be similar. We can see from the next slide. Here for this sequence number, so it's not repeated. It's just uh, a number from zero, one, two, three. So uh, so we run this uh, workload inside of the guest, and uh, for the migration throughput, we can see that uh, uh, the QED case is still much larger than the log compression case. So in, an interesting here is that we find uh, with 16 CPU compression, the migration throughput is even lower than the low compression case. This is because the compression isn't uh, efficient with CPU compression. So it actually deaccelerated the migration. So for the largest migratable data read, so for the QD case, it's still larger than the low compression case. And as for the CPU utilization, the CPU compression case uh, consumes all the 16 CPU. And for the QD compression case, it's uh, less than 70%. So the compression ratio between the CPU and the, the QD is uh, similar here because they use the same compression algorithm. So for the third test, we use the uh, we set up the memory cache T environment using this. So basically, it's a, a client a memory cache T client called a mem step client, and it writes random numbers to this memory cache T memory pages. So the random number is uh, much more difficult to compress than the previous uh, data pattern. We can see from the compression ratio here, it's only one point six. But uh, the QED compression cases still has an advantage over those two cases. So it's like uh, more than two times faster for the migration throughput. And the migration time here, infinite means that uh, the, the VM cannot be migrated. Like in the, in the low compression case, so or the CPU compression case, the VM cannot be migrated. But with QD case, it takes uh, around the 60 seconds to successfully migrate the VM. Okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, some future works that we plan to do. So the first one is a uh, VFIO driver-based uh, zero copy. So the current zero, zero copy is implemented based on the UIO-based QD driver. So this requires the QEMU to be root privilege to get the virtual address to physical address mapping via the page map. And this may be difficult for some cloud vendors because their QEMU doesn't have root privilege. And uh, this also requires QEMU to pin its memory. With VFIO based driver, we will have the, the VFIO support to do this. Um, so for the QED's where file based user service driver is still a work in progress and uh, we will be able to switch to that later. And the second, uh, the second uh, work we, we plan to do is smart acceleration support. So this uh, comes with the idea that uh, DSC can do a delta of the dirty memory. So the functionality is the same as the XBZRE in the current QED. So it finds out uh, the exact pages that the guest, uh, the exact bytes that the guest dirties. 
For example, if the if the guest only writes one byte, so there is no need to send the entire 4KB page to the destination. It can DSA can help to find out the one byte. Um, so this works efficient when the guest only modifies a small part of page. Um, but we know if the guest uh, writes the entire 4K pages, uh, the, the 4K bytes each time, then uh, DSA data encoding might not be efficient. So uh, in that case, we can use QAT to compression the 4K bytes instead of, instead of doing the data processing. So we wanted to have a smart acceleration here. Um, so with this technical, the migration thread will be able to dynamically switch to use QT. Um, IX, IX is also an accelerator that can be used to compression. So it can select either QT or IX to do compression or use DSA device to do a delta processing during non migration. So this will rely on a prediction um, based on the compression ratio history and uh, the data encoding um, history. So for example, we can choose to do uh, to compress the 10 requests at the beginning and uh, find out what's the compression ratio and also do using DSA to, to find out the encoding rate. Um, if the encoding rate is higher than for the upcoming pages, we can choose DSA. If the compression rate is higher, we can use QED for the following um, processing. So that's all for this presentation.